Hello, in this brief presentation I plan on showing you just two slides, one on academic paths that you may choose to take for engineering degrees, and one on how to be certified as a professional engineer. Here we see the academic paths. Since this is a community college course, many of you are pursuing an associate's degree in engineering or computer science, which you will use to transfer to university. Occasionally, but rarely, I have students who plan on stopping with their associates. This can land you a job as a technician working with engineers, but it is unlikely to lead to a career as a designer, and you would be unable to be certified as an engineer. So this slide assumes that you will pursue at minimum a bachelor's degree. The first thing to note is that this is commonly referred to as a four-year degree. But only about one-third of students earn an engineering degree within four years. It's no secret that engineering classes are challenging, so it's difficult to pass 15 credits in eight consecutive semesters. I often advise students to pace themselves for a five-year degree and shoot for 12 credits per semester. The second thing to note is that, depending on your university, you might sign up for a BS or a BSE degree that's Bachelor of Science in Engineering. The differences between these two are subtle. Often you take a couple more courses within the engineering department for a BSE versus a couple more general math or science courses for the BS. I haven't met an employer yet who cares about the difference between these two. After earning your bachelor's degree, you may choose to begin working or choose to pursue a graduate degree. There are two levels, master's and doctorate, or PhD. Sometimes students jump straight into a PhD program, but I advise against this. Committing to a PhD means at least three years of focused research on a topic that is usually quite obscure. You need to really be interested in that topic to make this commitment. So, to a degree, I recommend starting with a master's, and after that, you can make a more well-informed decision on whether you want to con continue with a doctorate. There are two flavors of master's degree, the traditional Master of Science and the more recently developed Master of Science in Engineering. There is a real distinction between these two. The MS requires completing 24 credits of graduate classes, performing research, and defending a thesis. This usually takes two or three years. The MSE is designed to get you into industry more quickly, usually taking one and a half or two years. It actually requires more credits, 30, but no research, which is where the time savings comes in. Which master's degree would you choose? There are advantages to each. The obvious perk of the MSE is getting to a job more quickly, but spending the time on research for the MS can provide valuable experience be parlayed more directly to a PhD, and you might even earn a research assistantship. What does that mean? It means that your research professor has funding for your work, which pays for your degree. It's a pretty sweet deal, so get to know your university professors and see if they want to offer you a position. I know graduate degrees may not be on your radar right now as a freshman student, but I hope this discussion gives you some perspective. I encourage you to revisit the possibility of a graduate degree in your junior year. Oh, and as a footnote, this whole discussion has assumed engineering degrees. It is not uncommon for a student to earn a bachelor's in engineering and a master's in another field, especially business. Down at the bottom, I list certifications. I don't connect a timeline arrow to them because they could really happen any time. During your undergraduate program, or graduate program, or after graduation. I've had a number of students who were certified in CAD software even before starting college. These certifications are important because they let employers know that you have specific skills, such as with specific tools, software, drafting, business sense, network security, and on and on. Sometimes these certifications require just a week-long course, other times a whole semester. It varies quite a bit. If you have a specific career in mind, talk with engineers in that field and ask for recommendations on what certificates to pursue.
Now, on the next slide, finally, we see the steps to earn the big certification, Professional Engineer. Once you earn this piece of paper, you gain the power and responsibility outlined in those bottom two bullets. You get to sign off on design plans, which means you are responsible if there are failures with the design. This can be a little scary. You may have your license revoked or even be imprisoned if your design hurts people or property. But I'm glad that someone is held accountable. Otherwise, our world would be much less safe. Okay, so what are those steps? First, you must earn a bachelor's degree from an ABET accredited program. Then you take a big test called the Fundamentals of Engineering or FE exam. It's pretty intense. I took mine at the Phoenix Convention Center with hundreds of others in a giant room. I encourage you to take this during your senior year of college while knowledge is still fresh. If you fail, you can retake the FE exam up to three times each year. After passing the FE exam, you become an EIT, or Engineer in Training. You then find a job and work under a licensed professional engineer for four years. After four years, you are qualified to take the PE exam. Note that this number drops to two years if you have a graduate degree. The PE exam, or Principles and Practices of Engineering, is another beast. But if you pass it, you then just have some paperwork to do to officially become a professional engineer as certified by the state you took the test in. There was a lot of information packed into two slides. The good news is that you don't have to be alone as you pursue your journey. Find a mentor in the field. Find a group of classmates with similar goals. Talk with your academic advisor each semester. All of these support structures will help you know the correct next step.